Just two weeks after the worldwide excitement from Starship Flight 5, SpaceX is already ramping up for Flight 6. And by ramping up, I mean they're deep into preparations to launch it. But that's not the only news. SpaceX recently shattered a launch record, hitting an impressive milestone that keeps the spotlight firmly on them. We're diving into all this and more in today's video. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on Starship and all of SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements. Most people might think that launching a rocket is all about that dramatic liftoff, but the real challenge is getting all the pre-launch tests to go perfectly, ensuring no issues arise when it's time for the actual launch. The process begins with the transport of booster from the production facility to the launch pad. This might seem like a simple relocation, but it's actually a critical part of the pre-launch preparations. Moving a massive booster safely requires extreme caution and precision, as even minor bumps or jostling can affect the booster's complex internal systems. Once it reaches the launch pad, the booster is lifted onto the orbital launch mount. This mount not only secures the booster for testing, but also supports it during fueling and engine ignition. Once the booster is mounted, SpaceX secures the quick disconnect system and chopstick arms, the components that play an essential role in the refueling and catching process. The quick disconnect system provides a critical link between the booster and the ground-based fueling infrastructure, supplying it with supercooled liquid oxygen and methane fuel. This step ensures that these systems are correctly attached and prepared to handle the intense pressure and cold temperatures during fueling. The chopstick arms, meanwhile, are positioned and tested for future catching of the booster after flight. These arms are designed to catch the booster on its descent. By preparing and testing these systems early, SpaceX can reduce the risks of failure or delays during the launch itself. With the quick disconnect system secured, fueling operations begin. This is a gradual process, where liquid oxygen and methane are pumped into the booster's tanks. One of the visual indicators that fueling is underway is the frost forming on the exterior of the booster tanks, caused by the extremely low temperatures of the liquid propellants. The filling of the tanks is done in a carefully controlled sequence, with liquid oxygen typically loaded faster than liquid methane. This sequence minimizes the risks of pressure imbalances, which could destabilize the rocket before launch. Frost formation on the tanks serves as a visual cue to SpaceX engineers that the booster is ready for ignition. Out of all the steps needed to prepare for Starship's launch, SpaceX recently reached the crucial static fire test stage with Booster 13. On October 22nd, B-13 arrived at the Starbase launch pad in Texas, and preparations for this significant test began immediately. The static fire test allows engineers to observe the thrust and stability without actual liftoff. Once B-13 was mounted on the orbital launch mount, SpaceX announced road closures around Starbase to ensure safety for the area. The company frequently uses these closures to prevent access near the pad during high-energy operations, like fueling and engine ignition. By October 23rd, B-13 was firmly in place, and crews began fueling preparations. On October 24th, SpaceX initiated the fueling process, loading B-13's tanks with liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Both of these propellants are stored at extremely low temperatures, causing visible frost to develop on the booster's exterior as they fill the tanks. Once fueling was complete, SpaceX activated the water deluge system, a protective setup that controls the intense heat and force generated during the engine ignition. This system sprays water around the booster, reducing the potential for damage to the launch pad and nearby structures. Moments after the deluge system kicked in, all 33 Raptor engines on B-13 ignited, producing an estimated 7,000 tons of thrust. During the static fire test, engineers monitor several key indicators such as fuel flow, engine stability, and thrust generation. This specific test ran for approximately 9 to 10 seconds, a standard length that allows engineers to confirm the engine's performance without overheating. The ignition created a powerful visual effect with flames reflecting off the frost-covered booster, and large plumes of smoke were visible across the area. Following engine shutdown, SpaceX began the detanking process, 
where any remaining fuel is drained from the booster to reduce pressure and safely prepare it for further inspection. The road closures were lifted soon after, indicating that the test concluded without significant issues. The successful completion of this static fire test marks a key step forward, bringing B-13 closer to being launch ready. Engineers will now perform a thorough inspection of the booster, examining the engines, quick disconnect systems, and structural components for any signs of stress or wear from the ignition. If adjustments are needed, they'll be made in this phase to ensure that B-13 performs reliably during its eventual liftoff. With Booster 13 having successfully completed its static fire test, the next steps for SpaceX is a detailed inspections and potential upgrades for B-13, particularly around the engines, grid fins, and stability systems to enhance performance during the next full-stack launch attempt. For the Starship upper stage, Ship 31, recent cryogenic and structural tests have confirmed that it's progressing as expected. SpaceX is now preparing it for further full-stack integration checks. The full stack of Booster 13 and Ship 31 is expected to be assembled at the launch site in early November, with a potential launch date for Starship Flight 6 projected for late November or early December. For example, Starship Flight 4 and Flight 5 faced extensive waits despite all technical preparations being complete. After finalizing all setup and testing, SpaceX had to wait months while the FAA performed environmental reviews and processed new requirements, adding months to the timeline. Musk has openly expressed frustration with these delays, noting that it takes longer to do the government paperwork than it does to design and build the actual hardware. Flight 6, however, is a different story. This time, the FAA granted SpaceX a multi-launch license after approving Flight 5, allowing the company to move forward without a separate approval cycle for each launch. This streamlined process is partly in response to Musk's ongoing pressure and SpaceX's commitment to meeting safety and environmental standards. Musk has used his platform to challenge FAA decisions, sometimes stating that regulatory delays risk the U.S. falling behind in the space race. This means that if SpaceX is technically ready to launch Starship today, they can go ahead without waiting on any additional approvals. Hopefully, this more straightforward process will apply to future launches too, keeping things moving at SpaceX's pace. Don't forget to check the link in the description to grab your own highly realistic Starship model. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.